I want to check the, the mics. Uh, Yannick or Kate, can you say something? I want to make sure I can hear you guys. Can you hear hello? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so let's do example 7.2 from the book. And again, this is from Hibbler's book. Now that everything is online and now that I'm recording, I got to make sure that I give credit and all that stuff. Okay, so in this example, it's a little bit different because they give us a cantilever beam that's connected to a fixed support and has a distributed load acting on it. So I have my distributed load acting on this cantilever beam that's connected to a fixed support. And they're giving us three points A, which is at the support, B, which is at the end of the beam, and C, which is halfway through the beam. So we have one and a half meters from A to C, so that's from the left to the center, and then another one and a half meters from C to B, so from the center to right. Okay, so first of all, this is a fixed support. So can anyone tell me what reactions will this support exert on the beam? reaction a moment but no x because there's no x forces acting on it exactly normally a fixed support would provide a y and x and moment but here notice that there is actually no x direction force so this support will only provide a y reaction i'm going to call it a y and then some sort of reactive moment i'm just going to call it m a okay so when we are solving for internal forces I kind of broke it down in the lesson into four different steps. Step one was to draw the free body diagram, which is kind of what we're doing now. And step two would have been to actually find all the reaction forces. Now, for this particular problem, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Um, if you guys remember, when we want to find internal forces at a point, we have to cut a section at that point. Now, if we make that cut, we basically end up with two sections, a section on the left and a section on the right. Now we can choose either one and whatever we choose, the answer will still be the same. Now if you look at this system, on the section on the left, we have one unknown, two unknowns. We can find them, that's fine, but for now they're unknown. But on the section on the right, we have this distributed load, which we know it's a load of 1200 newtons per meters. So really there is no unknown here. So once we make our cut, we can select the section on the right and then we can just solve it without having to solve for the reaction force. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay, awesome. So let me get some markers so I can go ahead and solve it. Essentially, we had already said that step number one was to draw the free body diagram, which we already did here. So this is, this is my free body diagram. Now, I want to simplify this a little bit, but we'll do it later. Step number two would have been to apply the equations of equilibrium to solve for my unknown reactions. And then step number three was to make a cut at your section and then find or identify the internal forces. Now in this case, if I make my cut right here, I can choose my section on the right, which will have no unknowns. So I'm gonna do that. If I choose my section on the right, my section will look like this. My beam from C to B. So this is C, this is B. And then on this section that I cut, I'm going to have that portion of the distributed load. And that's it. You know, I have the portion of the distributed load. I can identify my internal forces. So my internal forces will always be identified as a normal force 
in tension so here it's pointing towards the left because it, the beam should be in tension that's kind of the assumption a shear force and here my shear force is pointing upward because the shear force wants to make the beam rotate clockwise and again this is just a sign convention so if, if we get it wrong we'll just get a negative value so that's no problem and then a moment and we want the moment to bend this beam concave upward I think one of my students Zach said you can make it make the beam smile basically so that's how you know that your moment is positive if your beam is smiling then your moment is positive if your shear force is causing it to rotate clockwise then the shear force is positive positive. and if the normal force is exerting tension into the beam then the normal force is positive so this is my section these are my unknown internal forces and I can use this geometry information to actually find this portion of the distributed load so we know that we have 1.5 meters from C to B you also know that this distributed load is just a part of the larger distributed load does that make sense so far yeah. okay so if we know that the big distributed load is 1200 newtons meters then we can use this and geometry to find the magnitude of the small distributed load and we do this by using similar triangles so we have a large triangle that has a base of 3 meters and a height of 1200 newtons meters if we cut this triangle halfway through right because we're cutting it at one and a half meters then what we have is a similar triangle same angles but only half of the base so if it's only half of the base, it should be only half of the altitude as well. So what do you think is the magnitude for this distributed load, this high point? 600. Yep, 600 newton meters. So this, this is what we call similar triangles. If we would have cut this beam at one, so one third, one third from the, from the, from the left, then this entire magnitude would have been two-thirds of 1200 so 800 meters so it's pretty much triangles does that make sense yes okay yeah cool cool so step two would have been to find all the reactions but we're skipping that step because we don't need to do it so you know if we don't need to solve it then why solve it step three would have been to make our cut which we did and finally step four will be to find our internal forces so we find the internal forces by applying the equations of equilibrium so what are the equations of equilibrium sum of forces in the x is zero so the y is zero. Mm hmm And? And some of the moments or is that one? Or is it yeah, moments. Yeah. This is a two-dimensional problem, so we don't really have okay. a z-axis, okay? So the easy one is sum of forces in the x direction, right? Sum of forces in the x direction equals zero. In this system, what forces are in the x direction? Which are normal count as one? Yep. So you got a normal force, negative x-axis, so negative, and that's it, right? No, no more forces. So we got normal force equals zero, which good. That means that the normal force acting on the system is zero. So we found one internal force. Now we can look at the forces in the y direction. Now the y direction becomes a little bit more complicated because we have a distributed load. So if we have a distributed load, we need to reduce it to a point force. So I'm going to draw my beam again here from C to B. How can I reduce this 600 newtons per meters load into just one point force? Does anybody remember that? 
multiplied by one third and by 1.5 meters. Close, close, close. So since this is the area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is actually one half, not one third. So you multiply by one half, and then you multiply 1.5 times the magnitude of the load. So in this case, this magnitude should be equal to the area of this triangle. So if I were to draw just this triangle, the area would be one half of the base, which is 1.5 meters, times the altitude, which is 600 newtons per meters. The meters are going to cancel out, and that gives me 600 times 1.5 divided by 2. Can anybody give me that value? Okay. And then since the meters cancel out, the units are newtons. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay. So we have this force. Now, Yannick, you did say something right, right? You, you mentioned a one-third. And where that one-third comes into play is on the location of this force. This is a triangle. So the location of this point force will be at the centroid of that triangle. And the centroid of a triangle is at one-third from the largest side or two-thirds from the smallest side. So in this case, it's one-third from the largest side. So what's one-third of 1 1.5? Point 0.5. Okay. So we have 0.5 meters. Good. So... Now that we've reduced our load, we know that the normal force is zero, so I'm not even going to draw the arrow. But now I can find my shear force and my moment. So if I take my sum of forces in the y-axis equals zero, what forces do I have in the y-axis? I have a shear force, which is positive, so I'm going to write it down as positive. And then I have 450 newtons which are negative. So I'm going to write it down as negative. And all of that should equal zero. So what's my shear force? 50 newtons. 450, right? Yeah. Good. So we found our normal force, that's zero. We found our shear force, that's 450. And for the shear force, we had to make take the extra step of reducing this load into one point force. And now we can find the moment. And the moment should be easy, right? We got sum of moments equals zero. We can take the moments about point C. And we do this so that we can eliminate this force. And now from left to right, the moments about point C will include this bending moment, M sub C. And notice that this bending moment is clockwise. Because it is clockwise, we're going to give it a negative sign. Let me write down the sign convention for the X, Y, and moments. Okay? So we give it a negative sign for this equation of equilibrium. My next moment will be a force of 450 newtons. that's acting at a distance of 0.5 meters. And would this make a clockwise or counterclockwise moment about point C? Clockwise. Yep. Clockwise. So it's negative, right? So we get negative M sub C minus 450 times 0.5 equals zero. And now we only have one unknown. So we can solve for that one unknown. My moment about point C is equal to negative 450 newtons times 0.5 meters. How much is that? 225. Okay. So 225 newtons meters. So we got our moment and we got a negative sign. So what does this negative sign mean? 
that we assume the direction of the moment wrong? Exactly. So instead of this moment being in this direction, it's actually going to be in this direction. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So for internal forces, we kind of want to have a consistent um, sign convention. So to make things a little bit easier for you, always draw these arrows as positive and just leave the negative sign. So previously we would change it to a positive, change the direction of the arrows, but now we're going to be dealing with internal and external forces. So leave the signs that you get here, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Yes. Awesome.